Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is The Ramble. We go until midnight tonight from New York, New York, the city so nice they named it twice. Oh, there she is. Hola. Lori Thompson, in case you forget, her name is right under her picture. That's so helpful. Yes. (laughs) Sometimes I... Iron, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> uh, uh, I'd say, what's the weather like? And you'd say the same as it was last week. Well, no, it fluctuates. See, being in the Panhandle, Miami, you got your heat and sunshine almost all the time. By the way, and for- can I t- tell you a quick story? I mean, yeah. Th- then we can go on with that. <laughs> this there's this woman who got a hold of me, and they're doing a, a movie on the yeah. um, public access in New York, a documentary. Yeah, because you did the show Midnight Blue. Yeah, right? of course I did Midnight Blue for public mm-hmm. access. And they got a hold of me and they wanted to talk to me about it and they found me engaging and of course I am. And uh, uh, and they, they, they want to use me in the film and maybe even do some kind of consulting you know, for it. And Fun. the producer is Steve Buscemi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I, uh, I'm going to. Uh, I, I, they wanted to have lunch with me, but she said, "I seem to remember that you said that in winter time you go down to Florida, and I think that's a misconception that all Jews go to Florida for the winter." <laughs> and all Midwest. This Jew ain't Western. getting anywhere near Florida. <laughs> you know, yeah, I hate back. Florida, right? <laughs> Right. So I wrote her back and I said, Florida? Never. Mm-mm. I said, but that's Not another me. story. <laughs> I said, sure, yeah. I'll have lunch with you. But, the, you know, I had to, I was so outraged, <laughs> you know, that she thought that I, I lived in Florida during the winter. So. Yeah, well, that's why I was hesitant to tell people I take cruises, because to me it was old people playing shuffleboard. That's what it sounds and- like to me. And by the way, you know, you know, I hate to say this, but you're what, 62 now? 63, you're being generous. 63, I'm about ready to hit 84. Um, oh, uh, but but you're, in fact, by the time this plays, maybe we already have, I already have hit 84. Anyway. Uh, because you have the same birthday as my daddy. Huh? Really? You have the same birthday as my dad. Yeah. And my phone number is that birthday. Oh, I've, really? 12, yeah, 18? I, you, yeah, that's the last four digits of my phone number. Wow, wow! Yeah. I wish I could get that. Anyway, so yeah. um, where was I? I was uh, you were just uh, talking about cruises in cru- Florida? Oh, cruises in Florida Stere- and, and, and elderly cruises. stereotypes. And uh, I just uh, oh yeah, so I just uh, I don't want to get anywhere near Florida if I don't have to. You know, well, I mean, I would love to come visit you, but it's too close to Miami. Yeah, because yeah, we have a guest room, but it is. Are the people Florida. where you live up above? You know, because uh, in a state, you know, uh, there can be a whole different sense of culture and propriety, and so on and so forth. Yes, very. Much. I hope that you're living in a better place in Miami for that kind of oh, thing. Oh, much! It's a little town. It's a it's a tiny town, and I didn't want to live with uh, in a town with Fort in their name. Um, so we found a little boutique town. It's got uh, about 17,000 people. Mm-hmm. And it's close to those uh, big panhandle towns. But it's not of that. It's You don't get that idea when you're in it. I mean, you're, you're 15 minutes max from everything. People are friendly. It's a, it's a small town. It reminds me of the Midwest a little bit. Mm-hmm. Except it's warmer, yeah. And so you can you have to look for what you want. Just don't go to Florida blind and buy a house. And we like our house. It's uh, it, you know, I people always aggrandize their houses. Ours is really cool. We like it. We can walk our kayak to the water, and just it's it's perfect for us. 
it's two stories and I thought twice about that but I was raised in two story homes I'm always more comfortable in two story homes you don't have to hit the stairmaster you live in a two story home see yeah. you get your right well we had a we had a pen, pen what, what is it what's the one everybody's getting with the cycle that you know has a trainer's oh, uh, peloton peloton we had a peloton uh, here marjorie bought peloton. a peloton she did Oh my gosh! Yeah. She, now there are Peloton celebrities, people that are writing memoirs. Well, can I say yeah. first of all, I did ride the Peloton not often, but I rode it. <laughs> and the reason yeah. I didn't ride it a lot was it hurt my ass. Yeah, maybe you needed a cushion or a different seat. They kept you, saying, "Oh, here's a here's a seat." Nothing worked, you know. No. Plus, See, when I used to have a bike, and I used to have one in the marina. I used to get on the bike. Mm -hmm. I used to drive out the bike out to Fort Point, come back as I'm going. Oh, hey, that's nice over there. That's nice over there. Oh, yeah. Look, look at the scenery. When you're on a bike, stationary bike, right? Mm -hmm. None of that. <laughs> you know, except except on the Peloton. This is true. They have these various courses you can go on. So right. Meaning they take photographs or take movies of going somewhere on a bike yeah and so you do that for about 20 minutes and you're fine but you, you the, one, the one i always here. had on was the same exact course i took out to fort point every day <laughs> they had one going out to fort point so i did that one what the hell you know yeah that makes sense because i didn't think about that because i'm anti any equipment large equipment that sits in my house to me, it's just if you use it, and then you do for a while, but then it just sits there as a big beacon well, of your failure. <laughs> uh, the end story of this is after spending what twenty five hundred dollars on this thing. No, they're not cheap. They're not like a yoga mat. About six months later, Marjorie sold the damn thing. Yes, that that happens. That's Only got exactly about twelve hundred for it, but. You know, what the hell? It wasn't in the house anymore. Yeah, it's like it satisfied your interest, and you found out that it was okay, but then got your a little bit of your money back. That's the way you do it. Well, this and was also I, during COVID. So, oh, you know, that was the only way yeah. some people could. COVID, uh, Peloton did great during COVID. Oh, yeah. You know, they and sure they did, almost so went out of business when it was over. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and uh, people, you know, the business you know, people you, eye on that. You know why they that, almost went bankrupt? Mm -mm. What happened is during uh, during COVID, they got this just huge influx of business. Yeah. So they went out and bought all the stuff they needed to make the bikes, and they overbought. Yes. Because they were buying when there was COVID. They mm -hmm. weren't buying when there wasn't COVID. And right. so they had this inventory that, you know, was just choking them. That's why it takes an astute business executive to go, this is a fluke. But we didn't know with COVID. I mean, I'm not defending their decision. But with COVID, it was like it could end. There could be a vaccine next week or in five years. Maybe it's the plague. I mean, I think a lot of people thought this could be our version of the plague. Did I tell you, did I tell you how I... I I dodged a bullet. I was, I was having my uh, prostate worked on. First, <laughs> Massaged. <laughs> first with, uh, what do you call it, with uh, um, um, radiation. Right. Which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the radiation. <laughs> you, know, just, you get to read a lot of new magazines. You no, know, this thing moves around and it's like becomes, you're in a room all alone with it while they're moving it around and so on. Really? It, it, it becomes your pal. <laughs> you know, you're lying there, and every now and then the thing will come around, and the eye is looking right at you, and you go, hi, how you doing? Had a nice day? <laughs> you know? I mean, that was fun. It was like a little... It was, but then the other part of it was me getting the seeds implanted in my prostate. I've heard there's a lot of success with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a, So far... I'm a success story, you know, but I didn't, now, I didn't have, I didn't have bad prostate cancer. I kind of had, right. you know, what they did is they were cutting it off at the pass. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, can you feel the seeds? But, can uh, you, what? 
Can you feel the seeds? No. Oh, no. No, No, you can't feel them. They put about 100 of them in there, and they're all radiation. I, I said, is there anything I shouldn't do? And he said, well, don't put babies or pregnant ladies on your lap. Really? Of course. <laughs> You're 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 irradiated. I mean, if I if I if you brought a Geiger counter over to my house, you could. Hey. But they uh, and the, the seeds then die after about three months, and I still have the okay. seeds in my prostate, but they're not active at all. They're but anyway, on, uh... anyway, so they had to do the prostate seed implantation. Okay. Yeah. So I go to the hospital. And I, this is Mount Sinai, and I uh, uh, get all the gear on, everything I'm supposed to get on to get ready for this thing, you know. Your and they, surgery they, battles. The, the woman asked me a whole bunch of questions, you know, and there's a whole thing, and there's a whole setup before you go into the, the operating room. Basically, the, uh, this, the stuff they were doing per, basically said to me, please don't sue us. You know, they're, you know, they're doing all this stuff just to make sure they're not getting sued. And I, um, I'm i waiting for the doc for, to go up to the operating room. They say, uh, the doctor's coming down. He wants to talk to you. And he comes down and he said, we're not going to be able to do it today. I said, why? He said, well, there's just one piece of equipment I need that I ordered and they didn't go and buy. And what it is is... <laughs> Do you know where the ta- you know where the taint is? Well, That's a place yes. between your genitals and your ass, and a taint genital and taint ass. That's I would right. guess the name, and it's a little metal thing he puts in there so that he can guide the needles in. And they forgot really? to order one. This is the it's biggest like Mount numbers. Sinai, the biggest hospital in America, <laughs> practically the most well known hospital in America, and they forget. And I said, well, that's. A, p- a pain in the ass. He says, you think it is? He says, I'm pissed. He says, I got to really yell at them after we're through here. Right, don't they, can't you get those on well, Amazon? Well, we'll call you on Monday and we'll make another appointment. Mm. So they call me Monday, they make another appointment. It's like later that week. And later that week, I go in, I get the whole thing done, you know. Mm. Um, and that's a whole long story too that I'm not going to go into. But uh, because they killed me, they couldn't do a. They couldn't put me out because they said you're too old. We don't want to put you out. We don't want to. Take, oh, we, I, but we can. We can give you a spinal. Now I and I never had anything thing. like that. But it's not a problem. Spinals aren't any big deal. The, the big only deal problem is, is after I was through with the opera, the, the seat implantation, they take me down to recovery, and I can't feel anything below my waist. That's and it took three hours for it to wear off. Oh, and I felt yeah. like I have a friend who was a paraplegic, and I know what it's like to be him. I mean, just the idea that nothing below you works, below your well, midsection you, works. Well, you can tell it all yeah. you want. But it's anyway, the story I was trying to get to here is, in reference to COVID, one week later, COVID hit full force, they started enforcing all the rules, and the hospital said no surgery that isn't completely, utterly necessary. And, uh, you know, this was elective surgery. This wasn't regular surgery, right? Right. You got if, it under If the I wire. had waited one week or that, you know, or they didn't wait, they waited for two weeks to get me in there, I would have never been able to get it till after COVID. And by then, yeah. the cancer could have spread. Yeah. So, I mean, and there are so many instances like that in our lives. Yeah. We, we, we can remember mistakes we made, but what about mistakes we didn't make? <laughs> exactly. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. grateful for those. Well, I mean, is there any part of your life, let's say your career could be anything, where you could have gone left, but you went right, and the best way to go was left? Yeah. Um, well, to move to San Francisco, I was union at, uh, in St. Louis after a, and at the time, Live 105 wasn't even Live 105. It was Kits Hot Hits. Kits Hot Hits, <laughs> I, yeah. I had to take a pay cut. I didn't know anybody in San Francisco except the people that I was moving with, and they had to all 
Two of them, the one responsible for taking us to San Francisco, had gotten fired along with his assistant because it looked on the surface like they were having blatant affairs. I mean, three hour lunches come back with wine on their breath. And it was, it was extremely believed that that's what got them fired. And so I said you know, to myself, if they don't curb that, at least the visuals of it, that same thing's gonna happen again. And a, it's similar, it was similar to what happened in San Francisco and in a year, they were gone and I'm like, what in the world am I gonna do? I'm out here, my allies are gone. And it, but it turned, it was a scary What were you year. doing for work at that point? I was still at Live 105. You were at Live thought, 105, okay. Yeah, because I thought, you know, that's when it, I was in St. Louis, I thought, if that's gonna happen again, you know, I will be stranded in San Francisco. But I had carved an identity. I love San Francisco. They didn't like it and made jokes about you know, gays and other San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I was a kid in a candy store in San Francisco. And so that was sensed by the people at the station that I wasn't really in that pack. I didn't think like that. I was a little more open-minded than that. Yeah. So they let, they let me stay on. And that was, uh, that was good. It was a, but it was a nervous time. It was very uh, anxiety. Yeah, but that's not a case of, of going right when you should have gone left. Uh, that's a well, case of you did turn left when you could have gone right. In other words, you made the right choice. Yes. Yeah, but did you yeah. ever make the wrong choice? You know, I don't know because... I'll tell you my wrong choice. What was it? Oh, it happened in San Francisco. What? Do you remember... There was a time there where it looked like I was leaving to go to Washington, D.C. I remember rumors of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not Washington, actually, right outside Washington, WJFK. Uh, I, I, had been, I had been approached by final. WJFK to come mm -hmm. to WJFK, and they were yeah. willing to offer me the same money I was making in San Francisco, which was quite substantial. It was. It was but they were willing to also offer me syndication. Oh my gosh, yeah. that would have been. So, but here's the thing. The station was run by, uh, what's his name? Um, oh my mind. my mind these days, you know. I'll remember it, the was name. it Ted Turner? Or? No, it was a guy yeah. who was Howard Stern's boss over at... Uh, oh, Mel Carmison? Mel Carmison, Mel Carmison. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was oh, uh, run run by Mel Carmison. It was one of the Infinity stations. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, we, 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 they flew us to Washington, my, my business manager and I, and showed us mm -hmm. the station and talked to us and told us how much they wanted me and so on and so forth. Yeah. And uh, then we went back to California. And while we're deciding, we finally decided I'm going to go to Washington. Oh, you're going to take yeah. it? I hated to do it because I, I really felt that I liked Live 105. They've been very good to me. The guy mm -hmm. who was our general manager, Pat, was a. Uh, we I, had two good ones. Yeah. yeah he, was, he was one of the good guys. Yeah. And. And I felt that by leaving him, I would be betraying the station to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But um, the offer was really good. Yeah. And to work with Mel Carmison was probably really good too. Yeah. So then just before I'm about ready to say to Live 105, I'm leaving, I'm going, or maybe I already said that, um, I'm talking to them and they say, well, Mel Carmison will not let you go and will not take you on until you leave. In other words, he yeah. doesn't want to, well, Mel Carmison was kind of a really ethical radio guy. He didn't want to be <laughs> accused of stealing somebody from somebody oh. else. Yeah, okay. So they decided, well, you know, why not let, uh, you know, we can't do it. Unless you quit. Once you quit, we will then hire you. And see, in radio, that's an iffy, that's a kind of an iffy situation. Well, but let's also put this in another context. Mel Carmison had one talent on Infinity, 
and on his radio stations mm -hmm. uh, syndicated that was doing very well. His name yes. was Howard Stern. And yes. he had Howard Stern on in San Jose. And I was beating yeah. the pants off of uh, off of Howard Stern. Yeah. And he wanted a San Francisco station to put Howard Stern on. Right. Yeah. And I've I've often told people that if the technology had been around, you would be the deal that Howard Stern became. So I were, in the, at the last moment I I thought about it and said I don't trust Mel Carmison. I, you know, I just don't know the guy well enough. And he had this just horrible reputation about coming into stations and yelling at general managers. And uh, there's a classic story, I don't know how true it is, where he's walking down the street and um, all of a sudden he sees somebody who he wants to go yell and scream at across the street. And he walks across Fifth Avenue and starts yelling and screaming at him. And the guy says, Mel, don't do that. You're going to be hit by a car. And he yells back, no car's going to hit Mel Carmazan till I say he can. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's a true story or not. I'd like yeah. to believe it. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, there were all these stories about Mel Carmazan and whatever. And so I didn't go with Mel Carmazan. Yeah, well, that was yeah. my mistake. Well, Ben, but you don't know. See, no, we all I do know. Brand. I do know because I did wind up working for Mel Carmazan. Yeah, at, at Sirius XM, he came to be the head of Sirius XM, and I went. Well, I get. I guess I'm gone, you know. <laughs> and I was still there. And then uh, one day there was a point at which Sirius XM was going to go under because the. T stock market that they had, you know, their their shares went down to five cents, okay? <laughs> and and I remember there was this weekend in which Mel Carmison went in, found buyers for the for 40% of the station and saved it, okay? Yeah. And on Monday, I'm in the break room and there's Mel. Mm -hmm. And so I sheepishly walk up to Mel and say, hi, Mel, uh, I'm Alex Bennett. He says, I know you, Alex. I'm a fan. Yay! And I went, this isn't the guy I heard about. Because he's uh, a legend in our industry. Yeah, he was. He, what it was, what I, mis, what, what I misread about Carmison is that, yeah, he would yell at his general managers. He was a <laughs> taskmaster with his sales staffs. But when it came to talent, he did nothing but respect it. That's and that you know, is a cool and, rare and as long as Mel was at Sirius XM, I was at Sirius XM. It was yeah. like I'm sure it was like, you know, okay, well if we gotta fire people, blah blah blah, but don't touch Alex. I always got that feeling. That's a great that's a great security feeling. Yeah. And you know what? And Mel, I Mel and Martha Stewart sat right behind me at the Atlanta Olympics. And I'm just saying they're pretty friendly. I'm not implying anything, but uh, that's I remember that, and then I remember occasional visits. But he had his next in command, a guy named Dan Mason. Yes, I had Dan Mason. Yeah, I adore Dan Mason. He it came to him to fire Johnny Steele and I, and I have never imagined that someone could be so gracious in firing a person. He arranged an interview for me the next day. He was wonderful. And I will listen, and, and I had a voiceover, so I had to- I've heard nothing, I, I, I met Dan Mason on one occasion and I've heard nothing but wonderful things about him. He's yeah. awesome. I would go to the mat for Dan Mason. Yeah, well they yeah. treated talent beautifully. Even yeah. in your case of getting fired. But you know, the reason why I, I finally got fired, I think was because they, you know, they got rid of Mel Carmazan. He left, mm -hmm. and now I'm out there waving in the wind. And the next well, thing I know, I'm being let go. You know. Well, Dan Mason was so good about communicating the reasons for your hiring, the business reasons, and doing it so respectfully. I just well, they brought in Howard Stern. That was their that that was a financial reason why. You know, it was yeah, their talent. He said, 
He said, we keep you on because we like what you're doing, but we already own Howard Stern. That was exactly how he put it. We own Howard Stern. And that's what they were doing. We saw the writing on the wall because they were buying markets and they were buying stations in major markets and putting in Stern. Yeah, they're so putting in Stern. I mean, that wasn't the only reason they bought the stations, but when they did, they put in Stern. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, but one of the reasons I didn't take that deal from Carmazin is I got the feeling they were trying to get me out of the way to get Stern in there because you remember oh. at that point they they had already bought our station if I remember yeah. correctly uh, and and uh, you know uh, our little adventures in radio <laughs> yeah know. they I mean who, and who knows we know what 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 happened we don't know what nearly happened in so many situations. Yeah, good, bad, yeah. different. But I made I made I may have made a big mistake by not going to Washington. On the other hand, I could have gone to Washington. And it could have been a disaster. You know? Right. It well, I, yeah, exactly. So we always aggrandize what we didn't do, and yet there are four thousand million downsides. Well, for all what stuff. happened was also. We're going to go over here, but to hell with it. I enjoy this. Um, um, Which possible? They, at, at, Sir, at uh, Live 105, they said, please stay. And I said, well, they're offering me syndication. They said, we'll syndicate you. Really? Yeah. Uh, and they never wow. made good on it. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, that's, I have told so many people, Stern's timing was right. I, you know, this, but you, he listened to you in college, didn't he? When he was in college? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you were on in New York? Yeah. And uh, the technology. Listen, he has about. admitted to people I know privately, mm -hmm. Alex was my major influence. Yeah, and you can see. You can on see the him. air, he will say, oh, I, I never, I don't, I, I, when I was at Sirius XM and I, and I, uh, and I was there, he came into my show because he was mad about something I said about him, about somebody oh. who worked for him, okay? But that's a whole nother long story. But he <laughs> said on the air, Alex Bennett, I didn't think he was here anymore. Of course you knew I was there, Howard. Right, right. There's posturing, and then there's what we really yeah. know. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, yes, he was a big success, and, uh, but he did in many ways steal my act. He, there were so many similarities. In fact, he stole two dumb. acts. I'll have to tell you, he stole two acts. I also did Midnight Blue for a while when I was in Yeah, New York. which was an adult show. S about. show. He took the aspects of that show and applied it to his. Very true. To his Very career. true. So if I, I never said to myself, let's see, if I take my regular persona, persona and I add the sex that I did on Midnight Blue, maybe I could be a big success. <laughs> Nah, you know, but that's what Howard Stern became. Yeah, and we're all in a mouthing of so many. Also, also, he had love. one other thing, one other key to to Howard's success, and that other key was Mel Carmison. This was a guy that totally believed in what he was doing, and stood by him. You know, if you and I were working at a radio station, and the FCC said. Uh, we're, we're putting charges against you. Uh, we're thinking of fining your radio station $5,000 for what Alex Bennett did on the show or what Lori Thompson did or whatever. We'd be out the door. Right? Probably. Right? Mm -hmm. Probably. No, yeah. not probably. It <laughs> would be. Carmazin stuck through him. The fines came. He fought the fines. You know, mm -hmm. he did all that needed to be di done to stand up for Stern. Well, mm -hmm. I got to admire that. And that's the reason Stern became a success because he allowed these charges and stuff against him to become a national story because they mm -hmm. were fighting it. And he, yes. uh, I, I don't know, Mel, Mel, I have nothing but the greatest respect for Mel. I Same here, but I, I just adore Dan There would Mason. be no Howard Stern without Mel Carmison. Right. And well, just like there's no, there would be no Katie Couric without... Jeff Zucker, you know, there would, I mean, everybody yeah. who, yeah. you know, yeah. a lot of people. Anyway, really oh, we better get going here, otherwise people are going to get mad at me because I'm not going <laughs> to let them talk tonight, so I'll let all <laughs> three people that call me. 
you know. Yeah, we'll ship out. Time for us to yeah. veil moose. But let's do this again. Let's see here. We got Christmas coming up, but we'll have to figure that one out. Maybe we'll do one before oh. Christmas or something. Okay. You know. Yeah. And uh, anyway, have a nice couple of weeks, and I'll see you next time I'll in, in a week. A I, I don't know when. This is, I have to look the calendar to see when this is going out. Anyway, I think that, hey, I love you, a, dear. I really do. Yeah, you know, I love you. I, it's, it gets, I, I get more and more warm in the heart every time I talk to you. <laughs> That's Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. She will warm the cockles of your heart. <laughs> now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There we go. Hey, how are you? Uh, welcome back to our program once again. This is a, a Thursday version of it, and uh, then there'll be a Friday version, and then I won't have to do anything until uh, the following Monday. So, you know, that's the way it goes, folks. That's the way it goes. Uh, I only have one person waiting, but it's a quality caller. So I got to I got to admit that, that it's a quality caller. Let me uh, Let me go to him here. Hold on a second. Zoom. There we go. Okay. Hi, Kevin. It's just you and me. Oh, really? Yeah. What? Uh, you act like that's not too terribly exciting. What happened there? I don't know. This always happens on on uh, on Thursdays. I'm I'm you really beginning to think of not doing shows on Thursday because it can't be uh, a hmm? football game. No, it's this nothing. Night. It's just every Thursday. It's the same damn thing. You know. So. It's a crap football game, I'll tell you that right now. Is there a football game on right now? Yeah. What? Uh, Raiders are playing uh, San Diego 49 to 7. <laughs> 49 to 7? Yeah, and I think uh, 42 of those points came in the first quarter. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's a bludgeoning. By the way, where'd you get the red wristband? That's kind of cool. What's that? Your wristband on your watch is red, right? Oh yeah, that's my 49er wristband. See. Oh, oh really? They oh they make them, huh? Yeah. Oh, so you're you get anything you want on Amazon. You're a 49er fan, are you? You think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think? Yeah. 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 Don't let Brian know. Hmm. Don't let Brian know. Oh yeah. Well, Brian's what? He what team is his? He's an Eagle. Eagle. Uh, but that's yeah. the Phil. What, what Philadelphia Eagles? Yeah. See, I. It's funny. I don't know sports, but you name a team, and I can usually tell you the town it's from. I don't know why. It's maybe just every time I ever heard it, it registered in my cranium. Um, yeah, it's probably because it's yeah, it's been pounded into you so over the years so many times. Well, there was what was the team I saw? To now, he, like, answer me this one. There's a team called the Utah Jazz. They're a basketball team, right? Yep. How do they get a name Utah uh, Utah Jazz? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what do they have to do with jazz? There are a bunch of Mormons up there for crying out loud. I know you would think it would be Memphis Jazz and Utah Grizzlies, and now, that's I, did, the opposite. They, they didn't. They didn't. <laughs> they didn't go to Utah from uh, from uh, like New Orleans or something, did they? Mm, I don't think so. Because I think it would be. It would make sense if it was the New Orleans Jazz. You know. Yeah. But no. Why, why they just? No, call, I don't think so. Where did they come up with just the Jazz? I mean, how do you? I'm how really, do you? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. But, I don't think they were. No, they, I don't think they moved. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that much about basketball movement. Well, I what, probably where people were and what they were doing. I probably for the rest of my life should have a team I root for, right? You know. So yeah, uh, if you want. So what? I mean, would would the forty go to the Jets? Would the Forty ers <laughs> be a good one? Sure, you're from out here. Oh, okay, okay. Right now they're winning. Oh, okay. All right. You can jump on the bandwagon. Okay. Now the Raiders are where now? They're to, oh they're in they're in Las Vegas. Yes. See how do I know this stuff? I don't pay attention to football, but I know <laughs> that. Probably because we bitched about it before. Hmm? <laughs> because we bitched about it now. I know. Yeah. I just I just it seems I subconsciously pay attention to this stuff. You know. It happens. <laughs> oh here we go. Okay. 
Oh, okay. Right. You'll get it. Jeff? Hello there. Oh, he you got it. Did you get it? You got it. I you have no it. echo. <laughs> good. That's good. There is no echo. Yeah, there's no echo. You got it, Jeff. You're yeah. good. Thank well, you. Let's see here. So we're talking sports. Technically, we're talking sports right that. now, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to keep that Emmy. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the Emmy. Once a year, I have to somehow talk sports in order to keep the Emmy. <laughs> I mean, there was a, a, a sports reporter, um, um, trying to remember his name now, who used to do my show all the time, uh, who was with the Oakland Tribune, was he? I'm trying to remember now. But he, or he was with the with the Chronicle. I I can't remember. But anyway, uh, he uh, he did my show all the time. He did my show like on Mondays, and would come to report what had happened over the weekend in sports and so on. And uh, at one point, when I won that that Emmy, he mm -hmm. said, "I demand you give it back." <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said, "How did you win an Emmy for sports?" I said, well, it goes like this, you know. What it was, it wasn't even really, it wasn't like me reporting sports. Um, our uh, show that I was on called the Beta Breakers Wrap-Up Show, which was a race run every year in San Francisco. Uh, I, uh, I did this report on it. I was part of the reporting on it. And I did this piece called the Lazy Man's Guide to the Beta Breakers. And that was one of the pieces uh, yeah, we did yeah, yeah. in the Beta Breakers wrap-up show. Well, the wrap-up show won the Emmy that year for the best sports program. And so consequently, everybody that was involved in that show got an Emmy. That's how I got my sports Emmy. You know. How come I don't see it on the mantle back there? Should because be on the it's, in, it's actually in the living room. Oh, okay. And I don't know. This is a picture of my living room. Sure, right? Hold on a yeah. second. See it oh, over the, over. The, uh oh, oh, is it back? There? I see it. I there, see it. There. See. Oh. I don't, and I can't. I don't know how to do this. Oh yeah. Oh, there we the go. Shelf. Right there. <laughs> up on the shelf. Yeah. yeah there right there. That's one of them. Okay. So one of them. I can't tell you where the other one is. Oh, the other one's on the other side, but we can't see it. But there, there you have my I Emmy. So are you happy now? Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Right. Now you've proven that you have it. Yeah. Plus, this isn't really my background. This is a green screen here. So. Yeah. Whatever. But it's there. Yeah. Let's see here. <laughs> who just took, who else signed on here? Wait a minute. Scott, Scott yeah, Boddicker. Looks like. Hello, Scott. You there? If it's the real Scott. Oh, wait a minute. Let me let me uh, put my face on here for the time being. <laughs> Are you there, Spelled Scott? Spelled it right, so that's good. That's a hard one to, to fake. Yeah, I would think so. Scott? Mm -hmm. Scott? Alex? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Can you hear me? I can yeah, hear you. We just can't see you. <laughs> he's, he's well, real. he's falling. Oh, there. He I, yeah, there. I can see your hand Alex. now. Where are you? Have you been kidnapped? He's falling and you can't get up. Get up. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, I see, see. I see. Yeah, uh, I see. Okay, okay. Uh, oh boy. Talking about football with yes. uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, hear? Scott. Can you hear us? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh. Is that is that a dog? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Is, it, is, is that you that I saw there for a second? That was uh, Charlene. No, <laughs> Charlene is not a dog. You said that, not me. No, I. <laughs> I think he's drunk tonight. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> see, oh, I see Charlene! Two, well, there are his eyeballs. I can see his glasses. Those are his <laughs> eyeballs. They look at like the eyeballs of Satan. <clears throat> right. <laughs> I'm in the. Okay, I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere right now. <laughs> well, apparently. That's obviously. I, I don't know what it look like. It's fucking freezing up here. I know that. Where are you? Must, where where are you? Are you, in, are you in Iowa? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. boy. So it's freezing up there. And you're outside. Are you outside? It's cool. Are you outside? It's cool. 
Are you outside? Yes. Yes, sir. What are you doing outside? How? What's the temperature? About about <laughs> twenty two. Oh, good. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> let me see here. Um, I get better reception outside than I do inside. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't want anybody dying because they wanted to come on this program. <laughs> oh, I love you, Alex. You know that. Uh, no, I don't want you to die. It's twenty two oh, degrees it's okay. out there. It's okay if I die. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so uh, so you're in Iowa. What are you doing in Iowa? What's up in Iowa? Oh, I'm just enjoying. I came up for the uh, winter. For the winter, you went there for the winter. Oh, early December. Okay, yeah. You couldn't have come up with a better place to go for the winter. You know. No, there is no place better than Iowa. Trust me. Well, I said something horrible to Marjorie the other day. I said, you know, every day as I get older, the idea huh? of Florida sounds like a better idea. No. <laughs> you know? Florida's worth it. Because today we went out to get some lunch, and every bone in my body was aching because it was freezing out there. Yeah. You know, and it's, I'm sorry, all your bones start aching as you get older. That's, that's a, a Well, fact. you are very old. It's okay. Oh, well, thank you very much. As of Monday, I will be extremely old. Eighty-five? So, Eighty-four. Don't rush it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. Oh, here comes Tony. Here comes Tony. I'm, I hope Tony! He, hope he isn't freezing his balls off somewhere. <laughs> you know. Um, how are your testicles doing in that weather? Mine? Yes. Or Tony? Yours. I don't care about Tony's testicles. It's like 50. 50 <laughs> not, not much going on. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways. It, what did you say? It was 50 degrees in Iowa today. Wait, I thought you, I just thought you said it was 22. Well, that's what it is now, but. <laughs> it, got, it, it got up to 50 and then it goes down to 22. It's dark. Yeah. Oh, man, it's cold today. Well, I, I, my suggestion would be to you, you know, come home. It's warmer in Texas. He moved? I'm not sure. What the hell is he doing there? He didn't move there. He goes up to Iowa for some reason. I don't know. He cheats on his wife or something. Some, <laughs> oh, some uh, shit. Well, 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 get out. <laughs> they got the caucus coming up here in 30 days. Just hang around. What? Don't they have the Iowa caucus in like thirty days? No, not in thirty days. Well, maybe yes. you're maybe you're right. You oh know. no, remember you guys went up there. You said it was nice when you went to Iowa. Oh, I enjoyed the caucuses. They were they were interesting to watch. You know, I want a caucus in Iowa. You stay there because you're going to be there soon. You, you want a caucus in man. Iowa, or you want? Maybe you're going to diner. But, I'm not registered in Iowa, but I would like love the caucus. Yeah, well, you know, the caucuses, the caucuses are interesting. I don't know why they mean anything to anybody though, because they don't mean shit to a tree. You know? Yes, you're you're correct, sir. Yeah, I mean, they don't. Everybody goes, "Ooh, who's going to win the Iowa caucus?" Well, they used to say there was a barometer, wasn't it? Well, Alex? Years ago, like no, people don't they... realize that it's not a thing where people go into a voting booth and check off a name. Right. But this is. You go to a local school or auditorium yeah, like that, or something, and then if you're a Democrat, you go into one auditorium. If you're going to a Republican, you go into another. And then people get up and they give speeches for each of the major oh, really? candidates, right? Yeah. And try to convince yeah. people. Then they, everybody gets in lines. Have you ever been to one of these things, Scott? I'd like to see that. They get in I have been to one in... In, in Texas, yes. Oh, did you? Do they have caucuses in Texas? They used to, but they outlawed or they changed the rules. Oh, okay. Oh, really? But the thing is, yeah. they then uh, say, "Okay, everybody, line up if you're for so and so." They have the name of the candidate, and a picture of them, and then everybody would line up behind, in front of the picture, uh, and then they start counting how many people are in each line. Meanwhile, right. there are these really? people from each of the candidates going around to the other lines trying to convince people to leave their line to get in the other line. You are correct, sir. Am I right? It's the whole process. Yes. And I found yes. it just fascinating. 
I found it. It's, I mean, it's bizarre. It, it's it, bizarre. It, it doesn't Not fascinating, it, bizarre. It doesn't yeah. prove anything. It doesn't prove anything about popularity. It's just a yes. process, and not everybody. If you don't go to the caucus, you know, you know, at that particular given hour and time, then you don't get to vote in the caucuses. So it, right. it's it's very strange. Did I mm -hmm. pretty much uh, explain it correctly? I, the best of my knowledge, you have nailed it. Okay. Does anybody understand what I just said? Yeah. Probably not. Okay. All right. All right. Because it's an entire, it's a different process. It's a really incredible little process. Um, don't vote you caucus. You don't vote your caucus, right. Right. Yeah. You don't vote do caucus. Do no, caucus. Who <laughs> <laughs> was the uh, guy from the uh, Asian? The what? Do caucus? Yeah. You remember? The uh, back the best useless guy maybe the worst candidate ever for president he was bad yeah remember he was kind of odd right well i mean remember? he just you know he just he no, nothing like charisma he, nothing he was really short right and, yeah. and what did he do oh yeah then what he decided to do was go ride in a tank with a helmet on and when that picture hit the press nobody <laughs> voted for him i mean yeah, yeah. that was kind of chaotic really yeah, yeah. It's like who's giving him like, like well, that's a good know, idea. No, it's not. <laughs> he was like DeSantis. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're right. I it, forgot it, about the, that. The, the, tank. the tank is the equivalent of DeSantis's <laughs> cowboy boots. <laughs> you know, so horrible, Alex. I mean, do you think they believe? You think when they get dressed, somebody's dressing him and say, "You look good." I mean, they can't really believe it's going to fly, right? Well, it depends. Like, on, it depends on who you have around you. The best kind of person to have around you in uh -huh. that kind of situation is somebody who isn't a yeah, isn't a yes man. But let you know when you're doing wrong. Yeah, like Alex, you don't want me asking this. When you were doing the big shows and stuff, did you actually have? Would they lay your clothes out for you, or would you have somebody? Or would you dress? Would you dress yourself if you were going to do like the comedy show? Would you have somebody lay your clothes out for you? I wasn't to, a fucking you, moron just because I was on TV for crying out. Oh, <laughs> but I mean, I was just wondering, like, do they all have people who would say you want? Would you like this or this? You know, like. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I had somebody before every every show that I would do. And then you would well, choose before, what you want. Well, they would put the clothes on me, but first they'd give me a sponge bath. And, uh, <laughs> That's so good. Now you know you're making good money. Give me, give me, myself, give me a sponge bath, and Alex, if you're really lucky, you could get somebody Andy? lick you as a sponge bath. Happy ending? I shouldn't have said it. I think I opened Pandora's box. <laughs> well, speaking of Pan Pandora's out. box is a whole different story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, it's, no, it, it uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing uh, the uh, Iowa caucus. Yes, sir. And if, yes, you, if you've you never gone to it, book a plane and go up there and watch. No, remember you went to that di Alex. You were saying it was nice. You just went to that diner. It was really. It seems like Middle America is diner, totally different than a, New York. a diner that uh, we did the show from. I can't remember it was nice when you did that. that day. Yeah, but day. we did it from a diner, and this diner was a diner that every candidate would show up at, uh, except if they knew Alex Bennett was in town. So yeah, I sat there for people. days with nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But we were told that everybody, everybody, you know. Uh, so we, you know, we did a show from that diner, and uh, yeah. it was, it was New Hampshire. Yeah. What? No, in uh, in Iowa. Iowa. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We're both. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was it, wait a minute. Was it Iowa? I did the. the was it, I remember oh, I had one. I taped it on audio, when you went up there, I have to look at my CDs. I think it was, was it? if I'm not mistaken, I think maybe that was. Um, um, New Hampshire? New Hampshire. Yeah. That was New I'd Hampshire. I have to check. I wrote it on the. Yeah, thing. that was New Hampshire that they had that. Not Iowa. Iowa. Not Iowa. Yeah. No, right. I used to be in Iowa City. But it when? Was, when? And when? <laughs> When I was a child. I was going to say. No, you, you were not a child then. Well, maybe I was it looks 30 nice years her. old. Something what? Like that. I was 30 years old at that time. <laughs> okay, not a child. 30. In Iowa City, whereabouts? Uh, almost by the corn. By the what? 
The <laughs> corn. There's so corn cool. everywhere. There's corn. Well, I know. Yeah, he's right right next to our house. Was there's right, corn. It was right next to the corn. There's corn <laughs> everywhere. I know. <laughs> Go down to the corn and make it right. Well, well, there's no corn right now. Oh, no, the corn's picked. Yeah, the corn's picked, and uh, uh, everybody is going <laughs> on a hayride or something. But anyway. Uh, no, 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 no hayride. It's fucking freezing up here right now. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know that's what you said. <laughs> and it, and it's nothing. It gets to be thirty below. Yeah, and what's going to happen after no. this show? Eventually, we're going to say whatever happened to Scott Boddicker? It turned out to be a frozen <laughs> he corpse. Froze. He froze to death. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Alex. <laughs> Alex. Yes. Alex. Alex. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I've I've been drinking since eleven. Oh Jesus Christ. He's got to drink some coffee. So he's got he's got antifreeze in him. Oh, you're oh. right. <laughs> you're it's right. It's cold. Out. I'm on my balcony. It's outside. I oh my God! Don't jump. It's wearing underwear. <laughs> hey, wait Brian, for the what? 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 Brian, what? You've been drinking since eleven o'clock yes. this morning. Oh, oh I'm in Iowa. <laughs> what else is? There? Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't it know it was that... cold. He was cold. He's not he cold right okay. now. Okay. No, yeah, oh, it's cold. Like it. I'm okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, let, what are you what are you holding up there, Brian? Brian? We are. Uh, uh, we're back to COVID tests at work. No. What? Really? really? Yeah, we are. We're we're uh, heightened alert. Why? What yeah. happened? Because of the holidays. Yeah, so we're we're. Uh, our Sweden facility is spiking with COVID, so we are doing it now too. Really? So, oh, this yeah. is a, this is a company that makes tests for COVID and things like that. You're all that. coming down with it. <laughs> you know, Imagine nobody there's got the vaccine. Couldn't take <laughs> your own. Couldn't that. take your own advice, huh? Exactly. Yeah. So, Brian got COVID. So what, are you? I, 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 so you guys got to go down to CVS to get your test. Man, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All that. What? The, the, the jokes already went through during COVID. It's like we make the test and we can't even take our own test. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but wait a minute. Now, let me ask you this. Um, so, what happened exactly? There became an outbreak at your office? Uh, and uh, things are starting to pick up a little bit. So, uh, yeah. we're, we're being cautious, cautious. We're being cautious about it right now because we can't have COVID on our products. So, well, yeah, I would so say if you're yeah, making that would be a bummer. Yeah, if you're making a product to find COVID, having COVID on your products doesn't exactly you work for COVID. a company. Yeah, it actually spikes sales, though. No, we're doing <laughs> weekly. We're doing weekly right now. So, yeah, yeah, oh, do it daily. Yeah, are you doing it right now? Yes. Uh, very good. Oh, I wonder if you could be are, you you show, are you showing the proper way of doing it? Oh, he's going up the nose. Why, you, why are you hiding your nose? Come on, show us your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's big enough for me to inhale the. Okay, inhale. Find okay, you gotta you gotta find out. No, no here, 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 what you do is you take the uh, swab and you put it Ew. in the fluid. Put it in the fluid. <laughs> yeah. and, now, and now you drop it on the little little dots. Or, uh, the yeah. Little, yeah. 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 I won't say who, but someone, some guys that I know stuck it in their mouth and did it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's not I mean, the same thing. Right? The direction. That would have been Michael Dinchowski for me. Oh, uh, while wow. we're waiting for my test, maybe uh, Ray can sing a song. Ray. What do you want to say? Don't put it somewhere else and put it in that little box with a C on it, right? Uh, Ray, no, why don't you sing the song? Can you stay home? What do you want me to sing? Race, uh, sing the song you sing on Facebook. <laughs> oh, taste the biscuit. Yeah. The biscuit. What? I don't know. Ray, Ray's Ray's crazy. I think sometimes. No, 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 no. No, it's a meme. It's a meme. Check it out. My friend. It's a movie. My friends are in. It's an independent film. It's all. It's there's like millions of people watching. Oh, really? Is that yeah. Check. It's called like, Taste the Biscuit. Like, yeah, yeah. I was just screwing it's, around. It's <laughs> I have nothing to do. <laughs> oh boy! Sorry. Anyway, hey, I didn't bring it up. I didn't bring it up. Anyway, uh, 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 Tony, I just erased your uh, your post on my. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Well, no, it's, you know, it's a biscuit. I don't have a picture of. I got a second. It's a big okay. picture of a dog. What do I want that on my Facebook page? I know for? that's the one I walk every day. Oh, good. 
I replaced my mother here. with the dog. I think I figured you get a kick out of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Sure. So All right. anyway, hey, listen, I got a story here for you. Okay. Okay. Good. Once Something. upon a time, there were three little pigs. No, uh, I got a story for you here. And this one, oh, it always gets me when this happens, and I don't know why. I guess it's my upbringing years ago Year? when, when there was a thing called the, uh, uh, you know, the, the the witch hunts and so on with McCarthy hearings and so on oh, and yeah. so forth. And so I always get mad that people don't get their full advantage of the American system of being able to be considered guilty until proven so. Well, it seems that Hulu has said thanks but no thanks to a reality show that would have featured the family of um, Sean T Diddy Combs uh, and the uh, project from James Corden's production company was in early stages when the discussion was made to bag it after multiple lawsuits alleging sexual assault were filed against the mega producer. Uh, that's uh, Sean Diddy Combs, not Corden. On December 6th, uh, it was reported that the most recent allegations against Combs, and he was accused of sex trafficking and participating in gang rape of an 11th grader, a.k.a. Jane Doe, in 2003. Is this right? For them to dump him without a trial, without any evidence being provided, just the accusation itself? I mean, after he's found guilty, I could see them dropping him. But prior to this, is, what, is there something wrong with that picture? Yeah, I think the guy might be living right next door to that girl. And uh, it might be somehow a good idea to keep him away for a while while he's... No, I getting... don't think that's it at all. I don't think that's it. That's not what I'm saying here. He has been accused. Yeah. Accused uh, of this. But he yeah. hasn't been found guilty of this. And by the way, I don't think the girl lives next door because nobody wants to live next door to Sean Diddy Combs. Uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, is it right to dump something based upon accusations? Because anybody can make accusations. And believe it or not, a lot of these accusations were made in the last hours before the law in New York it's you know, they had a law where you could file these charges and it could go back 20 years 30 years whatever and then the, the uh they the day came that this particular rule went away and on that day that's when this particular case was filed isn't there something hmm. suspicious about that maybe so, yeah. so who what was he dropped from what did uh, say? hulu oh a show that he was going to do for hulu well, they, you know, they, their lawyers get in the room and they just say it's not worth it. It's not worth it. what the lawsuits. It's not worth the hassle. We'll just get rid of them. We'll do something else. You know, they don't even care. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. but they, but they're doing this as a result of accusations. Yeah, that's what but, they do now. You know, it's but that's wrong. Oh, I agree. You know, that's absolutely wrong. It's enough to yep. make me want to get you know quit Hulu. Uh, because, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, I think, uh, unconscionable. This, this goes on a lot today. Now, uh, maybe he was guilty of doing it. Maybe someday he will be found guilty. But right now, he has to be presumed in innocent. Am I not right? But I think I read a story that he might have paid her hush money. No, so no, 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 no. This was, this this the, this was another story? case. This was his oh, ex another case? Oh, I'm sorry. His ex-girlfriend of his oh, okay. who said, I, who said to him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the... People, the law would say you raped me or something like that, and if you unless you pay me thirty thousand dollars. Okay. Well, so sure then he didn't. So she went and she made the uh, accusation, and they were going to charge him with it. And the last minute she stopped because they came to an accommodation, which meant he paid her off. Uh, it, was, it was easier to pay her off than go through the grief of having to deal with with a woman who was probably lying. Okay, yeah. but and wanted money out of this whole thing, but you just give her some money and have her go away. Right. So. You know, I, re of course, I don't remember the McCarthy hearings because I wasn't alive, but I do remember Richard Jewell, the, the, 
at the Atlanta Olympics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, they, they absolutely <laughs> yeah. ruined this guy's life. By the way, I was at the Atlanta Olympics, and I was in that place. He was innocent. Uh, and he turned before, out to be innocent, but his life yeah. was destroyed, and I think he died and everything. Accusations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember that story. Yeah. yeah, and the press was all over him, too. You remember that? They were yeah. Like standing oh, yeah. At his apartment. It was all just assumed that he was guilty. Just... And, and I think he wound up suing the FBI, if I'm not mistaken. And I, got I think a, so. Got some money out of that. But his health was never good again, and he was just it just destroyed the poor guy. Yeah, that was a great movie they made about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. And that was well, that was quite a few years ago, and it's it's happened hundreds of times since then. Yeah. Well, I just, I just, uh, you know, it, it bothers me when I see this kind of thing go on because I just, I just think we have to presume innocence. So you don't get rid of them. You don't you stop them from having a job. I mean, uh, yeah, I know you, you don't want to have the stain of whatever he did on your company because you're hiring him. But that's not the American way, you know. And if you're going to no. stand up for the democracy. You're going to stand up for a right of a person to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. It, what dog is that, Brian? Is is that is that Tony's dog that he's sitting? Oh yeah, yeah. My it's all it's all messed up though. Yes, that's Kansas. <laughs> no, that's a, that, that's a dog. Oh, I gotta see it. I don't see the big picture. Oh, I see the dog now. Yeah, what dog? What no, doing? it's a. I got. I have to re readjust it. <laughs> anyway. Readjust the dog. So anyway, that just that just kind of bothers. Adjust my dog. You know. Yeah. I mean, I I believe in the American uh, system, and I believe in the honesty of. See, the American system is created <laughs> to make you believe that it's something that it really doesn't isn't really in practice. You know, yeah, you're presumed innocent until found guilty. All oh, right, tell Hulu that. So, you know? Alex, huh? Is Trump innocent? Is Trump innocent? Yes, at this point, okay. until he's proven guilty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, if he were working for me, I wouldn't fire him. Okay. Okay. I don't. Well, I don't know I, if he would ever be working that. for me. Probably the other <laughs> way around, but you know. He's got so profound when he's drunk. Who? Uh, who? Scott is profound when Where he's drunk. Where is Scott? Is, I can't see him. Can oh, you see him? Because like he, he's, he's outside he's freezing his ass off. Oh, okay. Oh, he's down from the bar down down the street. And then you like, missed it, Ray. He said he was fucking, and then he waited too long, but he said drunk. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. what? What did I say? Now, you, you are really funny, Scott. You really are. I will come up to New Jersey and fuck uh -huh. you up, bitch. Okay, you're getting uh -huh. demonetized. <laughs> well, there goes, there goes, there goes my I'm money. Just, I'm just teasing Shirley. No, that's oh, okay. You're so I know, Scott. You can tease me. I'm okay. There goes 50 uh, cents out the window. Yes. <laughs> I'm down, OJ. Well, why don't you just go inside where there's light and we can see you? You can't see. Like see. Oh, there he is. Like, well, I, I see everybody. faded. I see a little bit of light in the bottom there. Okay. Got a hoodie. I'm, I'm on my ba balcony in, in Iowa under a cover because it's freezing out here right now. But you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. He could be naked. <laughs> he could be naked right now and we wouldn't know. Remember the day I am he took totally his shirt naked off? right now outside. Oh, in Iowa. I remember Are, the night he took his shirt no. off. He took You're his like, shirt off. Uh, At the end, yeah, that was hysterical. It's like you're in an episode of Fargo. <clears throat> Fargo. Yeah. Okay. I'll go I don't know. He just seems like he's in an episode of Fargo. I will move inside. Yeah, make turn on happy. some lights. Yeah. Make everybody happy. Oh, okay. oh. Like he's, good, good. One of his <laughs> he's raising. I'm so old. I lost he's my glasses. So now, old. thank you. Too warm inside. I am a Mormon. <laughs> it's too warm. Oh, warm. Okay. We are all oh, Mormons. It's warm in here now, yeah. Good. He's not going to get frostbite now. We're happy, yeah. 
He thought you right, said no, Mormon. Crank all the lights. Yeah, he thinks he's Mormon. I can't believe. No, he says he's Mormon. Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 oh there he is. Oh, there he is. is. This is a man, ladies and gentlemen, in case An you aren't, aren't knowledgeable about this, who has been drinking since 11 o'clock this morning. 11 o'clock at the Big Grove in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Yeah. you got to be tired. And what is the time? Is it there? 10.39? It is. Uh, yes, 10.39. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. So almost 12 hours. Good and so you. where are you staying? In my condo in Iowa. In your con oh, you own a condo in Iowa? Yes. Yes, sir. Really? Something we all aspire to. Why in to. the world did you buy? <laughs> yeah, we think Florida now. <laughs> Why in the world did you buy yourself a condo in Iowa? <laughs> it's not even warm. Because it's near the bar. <laughs> it is exactly. Who said that? Me. Or yeah. Ray. Okay. I can walk half a block. To my east, to be in a brewery in Iowa. Okay, listen, I would suggest, okay, this is just a suggestion. And I'm not yes, suggesting sir. this because I don't like you just being stinking drunk on this show. Which Oh, I've got, I, am I drunk? <laughs> Maybe? A little? But, I, you know, I had a friend recently die um, from, <laughs> uh, from uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Okay. And finding out after the fact that he was drinking a lot more than I thought he was drinking. Oh, sure, sure, Shecky. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say who, but. Oh, you, I, we know who. Okay, okay. And uh, I, so I, whenever I see people drinking, it bothers me. Because if I care about them, which I do care about you, I don't want to see yeah. you getting cirrhosis of the liver. And, and you don't think you will, but chances yeah. are pretty good you will. Problem is, it happens quick. Well, it does happen quick. Yeah, I had I've had two close friends die of it. One, she was in her thirties, and the other guy was in his early fifties. And you know, they're just going along, everything's fine, and then boom. Well, and then once it wow. starts, all of a sudden, once it starts, man, they can't. It's they can't stop. They can't it. do anything about it. Not it's... usually. He just it might. If if they get it early enough, and you stop drinking completely, they can kind of keep it under control, but. If you if you drink anymore after it starts, um, there's a there's a there's a point of no return. Wow. Yes. Yes. Sure. Yes, yeah. Charlene. And they won't give you liver yeah. transplants if you drink if you're an alcoholic. Well, okay. right. Unless you're uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Mickey Mantle well, got a liver transplant. Well, if you're Mickey Mantle and you're Mickey Mantle, well, <laughs> if you, I'm it, not Mickey Mantle, I, but yeah. But you're a Scott Boddicker in Iowa, <laughs> yeah, almost yeah. Mickey Mantle. Oh, yeah, yeah almost, help. but not quite. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, there's our, there's our, uh, there's, is, and you uh, passed. All clear. I passed. All clear. Yeah. I studied all night, so I passed. You passed your COVID. <clears throat> like I take a picture, so I took a picture of it, and I got to show security tomorrow to get in the building. Was that 15 oh, really? minutes already? Wow. Wow. Uh, as long as the control line is there. Yeah, Charlene, you gotta, you gotta, uh, uh, you want to have your hand up? Oh no, Scott. Is good yes. though. I mean, he just said what I was going to say. Like, um, like big rock stars get liver transplants and stuff, you know, because they can exactly. pay. Exactly. See, look at he's good. He's still cognizant and he knows what he's talking about for a guy drinking. If you've got he's the been money, drinking you since eleven o'clock this <laughs> morning for what crying that out loud. Yeah, you got to calm down. I here. haven't had a drink since nineteen seventy three for crying out loud. Okay, I don't drink okay. either. Just coffee and tea. Yeah. I don't, that, drink. Yeah. I don't drink. I don't drink at very all. Good. I stopped drinking. Yeah. 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 I know. Like, I'm not stupid. It's not good for the liver. It isn't. I drink a little bit, but hardly ever. If <sighs> if he did a if he did a, a beer a day, I don't think you would get cirrhosis of the liver. No. But no, if no. you start drinking at eleven o'clock in the morning, uh -huh. okay, it's a it was a special day in Iowa. But the, how was the, it? Wait, 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 wait a minute. The, how how was it a special day Thursday. today? <laughs> it was Thursday. Every day is a special oh, day in Iowa. No, 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 no. Oh, the the uh, the Big Grove, which is the brewery, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. They opened up a new store in Cedar Rapids. Well, and so that oh. was oh, that was the big day. Oh, <laughs> that, 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 that's that's like opening a stop and show. And uh, I went down there and we started drinking early. And uh, but yeah, oh, normally, who's normally it, 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 when I'm when I'm in Texas, mm-hmm. I I drink maybe a beer to a a, a week. Really. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, in that case, you're fine. You. you know, I'm just in Iowa. I'm having a good time. My wife is in Texas, so I'm That's having great. a really good time right now. This is the only guy in the world I know, by the way, folks, that if his wife is in Texas and he's in Iowa, the first thing he thinks about is drinking. The first thing I would be thinking about is having sex with somebody. <laughs> I, well, no, not at, no. well, wait a minute, not anymore. In fact, Marjorie, oh, yeah, I was thinking yeah, about yeah, it yeah. tonight. Marjorie's the only wife I ever had that I didn't cheat on. Because <laughs> you don't want to have sex <laughs> anyway, right? Yeah, you know why I don't have I all the other things, but... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. See the boy. Alex? What? I could kill you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> You're 83 years old. Oh, Marjorie, you know, you oh, Marjorie, sex, Mar- right? oh, Marjorie would kill me. Oh, that's what I you. mean. She'd kill you. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. 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 No, Marjorie would kill Alex? Me. Alex? <laughs> he's, about, he's about to think, like, maybe. <laughs> Alex? I yeah. see his eyes moving around. Like, you yeah, never know. Alex? <laughs> Alex? What? Oh. Can, you, can, you, can you even have sex anymore? Oh, my God. Uh, Tell the truth. Uh, I want to know. I want to know for okay. me. Is there, is there, I'm, is I'm there 55. Is, is, I want to know. If I'm 83, can I have sex anymore? Uh, can I answer it this way? Is there a reason why you're asking? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to know. Why? You're 18 years older than me. Yeah. Can well, I have uh, sex uh, at 83? I, it's not easy. It's not easy, okay? Because okay. I've okay. had I had a prostate operation. Didn't remove sure. the prostate, but I had all the sure. the you know the I was it was radiated to a fairly well. And yeah. after that, it gets a little more difficult, you know. Okay. So, Good. Yeah. I mean, hey, I want to know. Hey, look I've at De Niro no- and Pacino. They just had kids. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're right. How are they doing? De Niro had prostate cancer. I think I, I think I would still have a, a good operating mechanism uh, if yeah. I hadn't had those operations. Okay. 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 That, okay. Yeah. So that if that answers your question, just don't get uh, prostate uh, cancer. Up, yeah. up to the prostate, you were okay. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Up to the, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. At what age? Seventy nine. Seventy nine. This is Alex's life. <laughs> I mean, this this is life changing for me, man. Yeah, but I was Scott, eight, I think realize. I was eighty one when I had the uh, prostate stuff. Eighty one, Alex. Yeah. Can I? I don't mean to speak on your behalf, but when I used to visit Shaggy, he used to tell me about you know all your, your different girlfriends. You were not in a nice way. But how can Scott compare himself to you? I mean, how many you've dated quite a lot of famous women? Wait, now. Wait, wait, what are you talking about, Shecky? When you went to see Shecky, what did you say? Sometimes we would talk about we would talk, I would ask about you and stuff like that. You know, some of your funny stories. <laughs> and, and, and what did he say about me? No, he said that you were always loyal, but you got that you dated a lot, I guess, because yeah, you were famous. So I'm trying he to say was. Scott's trying to compare him. Scott, I don't know if you can compare yourself to him oh, because I, I, I've got I've got a solid sexual partner all right she loves sex all right what can i say and, you know? you. and she'll get it any way she can from anybody she can <laughs> well, right no, now, no. <laughs> she she is a solid she's probably getting it right now <laughs> yeah. she's she probably saying to herself boy well, i'm certainly glad when scott isn't here <laughs> and it's everything not, changes uh, yeah so he's up she, there uh, drinking his Nuts off, but down here I'm screwing everybody in the in the. No, in the, no, 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 no. I'm she working my. my I'm making my way through the Snapple factory. Very, very loyal, <laughs> and there's no Snapple in Plano too. I want to tell really? you that right. Now. But the company's there. No, nope. not anymore. Who it was on the campus? They, moved. Uh, moved? they moved. Oh, they moved. Okay, they probably knew you were there and getting drunk a lot. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. They they moved okay. up north. Well, to hold, hold it down just Texas. a little bit, Scott, so we can talk to a few other people here. All right. How I'm, you doing? I'll go out, man. How you doing, Kevin? I'm good. Enjoying yeah. the entertainment. <laughs> 
What is the entertainment? <laughs> Getting Scott drunk? If that's I'm a, not drunk. I, <laughs> come on, Scott. Scott, hey, look. denial. Is it denial the first stage? Denial. Denial's a river in Egypt. What? Uh. If, if Phil was on here, I'd be drunk. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, all I'm saying is you're you're drunk, um, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm not holding that against you. No, but it's just it's I perhaps have to, have to tell easy. you to hold it down for a little bit. So yeah. other see, Jeff hasn't said a word all night, and I think that he had a lot talks. to do. I think that had a lot. He lo never talks. He does. Well, he no. does. you never hear him talk because you're talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But anyway, um, by the way, our, um, you know, they came out with some stuff today and it, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, oh, oh Biden's a horrible president. It's a terrible president. Blah, blah, blah. Do you know that the stock market the last two days went up, up almost a thousand yeah. points? That's yeah. fucking Biden. He made the stock that market go Biden. up. Yes. Unemployment's at a record low. Inflation's yeah. going down. Gas is going down, and then they they they, they keep saying it, it isn't. They're just lying. Well, no, all the, the thing time. is, it's a perception because Burden. it's it's just people keep saying it over and over again. Oh, you know, it's it's uh, you know the economy is terrible. Uh, Biden sucks. He's taking do a terrible job with the economy. No, the economy is actually on a rebound. In fact, all these Republican naysayers back last year were saying. Wait till we get into into 2023. You're going to see things get a lot worse. Yeah. yeah. Trump said we were going to have a depression worse than 1929. Yeah. 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 Well, where's that depression now? Well, he's just full of crap. He just says stuff like that all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. I know. Trump sucks. Uh, but, but the fact is that... that uh, uh, oh, and then the, the part that really gets me, they're trying to impeach him. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, come Man. on. He you know, sucks. no evidence. Uh, no, what they, about they, they have no Hunter. evidence. They have absolutely no evidence. All right. It's all about Hunter. Hunter Biden. He sucks. <laughs> oh, there you go. See, <laughs> I just see the light like it. Hunter sale. Biden isn't in office. Hunter Biden has nothing to do with. The reason you're seeing the light man. now is because Scott is nose down in the rug. <laughs> <My mom's coming laughs> Whoa. That's trippy. I hope he's all right. Tomorrow, no drinking, Scott. Oh, tomorrow he I isn't going to be able to lift the glass. His head's going to hurt. So hard. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what I don't like about when you do that. The hangover the next day. <laughs> really? Better have a margarita ready. What do you right. take? Hey. Over there? What would you? What do you uh, take? Let me get Bloody shot. Mary. Really? Bloody Marys? Yeah, they're pretty good for a, a hangover. That's what they, they say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hair of the, the hair dog. Hair of the dog, right? Oh, the dog. <laughs> Let's get it together. <laughs> but let's talk about Hunter Biden. Come on. <laughs> what about him? I swear, it's He's like an doing, it's like doing a, 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 a like driving down the road with a drunken person who's tugging on your <laughs> steering wheel. That's, That's how right. hard it becomes to do the show with I Scott do. when he's no. when he's three cups to the. Oh yeah. Try this. You to know the what wind. this is? Those are two of those. <laughs> yeah. Alex, how, how how often do I call into your show? Uh, give me give me the finger. <laughs> give me give the finger again. So what? Okay. Does that so, mean does that mean I have one minute left? Give me your task here. <laughs> <laughs> What? What is? He's a producer. Who? I was gonna say. So if you don't call that much and you're always drunk, so what's the percentage of your drunk on here? <laughs> That's a good okay, question. Brian. Don't make don't make me come out there to California and kick your ass. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna drive? I know where you live, buddy. I know where you live. We have no corn. I'll give you Phil's address. Hey, know you. Meet me at my job at uh, AAA Carpet. No. A1 Carpet. In Concord, <laughs> California. Concord, California. Yeah. A1 Carpet. I'll be waiting for you. It's Carpet One? Carpet A1. One. A1. That's it. Carpet okay. One. Carpet, oh. par, car, I, carpet hey, One. Alex. Public nothing. 
What? I really miss I really miss Phil calling in. I do. Really? Well, tell him to call in. Well, you know, he's welcome to call in anytime he wants to, but he doesn't I, want to. I, so. I, you know, it, it's like a car accident. I miss Phil. I love to see him, but I hate him, yeah. But there were times yeah, when you wouldn't 